Hey everyone, in this video lecture, we're covering the topic about enzymes. So to re remind you where we are in this unit, we've been talking about the different molecules for life, aka our macromolecules, which are also known as biomolecules, or also known as organic molecules. And we talked about carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Well, we are going to talk today about a very, very special type of protein called an enzyme. So enzymes are special proteins and a little bit of terminology, most enzyme names end with the letters ASE. So for example, lipase, um, the ending ASE tells us it's an enzyme. The beginning LIP looks a lot like lipid. So a lipase enzyme specifically is going to act on or work on lipids. Protease, Again, it ends in ASE. We know it's an enzyme. The beginning protein there looks a lot like protein. So that would be an enzyme that works on proteins. Amylase, the beginning doesn't look like much, but we know it's an enzyme and it's specifically an enzyme that works on carbohydrates. <clears throat> so the job, the function of enzymes is to control the speed of chemical reactions. And there are really two ways that enzymes do this. <clears throat> And we're going to walk through each of the jobs, but generically what happens is you have an enzyme that has a specific shape to it, and it's going to bind like puzzle pieces to a substrate. <clears throat> a substrate is the molecule that the enzyme is going to make a change on. And the enzyme and substrate will bind together at a spot on the enzyme called the active site. It's active because that is where the enzyme is going to do its thing. It's going to change that substrate. It's going to make a chemical reaction happen. When the substrate and enzyme join together, we call that the enzyme-substrate complex. Once in that complex form, the enzyme is going to make a change to the substrate. Um, and there are different ways it could change the substrate. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then after it makes a change on the substrate, the new molecule or molecules that are created from your enzyme are going to be released. So enzymes speed up chemical reactions because if there was no enzyme here, the substrate would never be changed. It makes a change happen and makes it happen much faster than it would without the presence of an enzyme. So there are two main jobs, uh, one we just kind of demonstrated. The first job an enzyme can do is break a substrate into multiple new products. So every enzyme has a substrate that binds to it, and it wants to change it in some way. The one more common change that enzymes make to substrates is by breaking them apart. So in this example, we have one substrate bonding to one enzyme, the enzyme makes a change by basically splitting the substrate up, making a chemical reaction happen, and then two new products are released. Enzymes can somewhat do the inverse of that, where we have multiple substrates, in this case, in the example, two substrates join into the enzyme at the active site. The enzyme will bond to those two substrates and then will cause a chemical reaction to happen to join or bond those two substrates together to create one brand new product. And that product will then be released from the enzyme. We call this sort of model the lock and key model. And the reason being is that every enzyme has a very specific shape to it. That means only certain substrates with the correct shape can bind to the enzyme, just like a lock and a key. Every lock only has one key that will work for it based on shape. If you try to put in a key into a lock that doesn't have the right shape, it won't unlock the lock. Similarly to enzymes and substrates. Enzymes have a specific shape that matches the specific shape of the substrate. When the shapes match, they will bond together, allowing the sub, uh, enzyme to do its thing to the substrate, very much like a lock and key. Shape is very important for the functioning of an enzyme. But what can happen is the environment around an enzyme has the ability to change the shape. So specifically, some things in the environment, there are others, 
like temperature, a drastic change in temperature or a change in pH, like how acidic something is, has the ability to denature enzymes, which basically is a way of saying that the enzyme changes shape. It, it really loses its shape altogether. And if it doesn't have the correct shape, like a lock and a key, then that substrate cannot bind to the enzyme. The enzyme will not do its job of either breaking that substrate up or bonding substrates together. And whatever that substrate is needed for won't work properly. So enzyme shape is very important to its function.